This is part two of the Wi-Fi Ranger installation video. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'll put the link down in the description. Click on it, watch that part first. So this is part two, I hope you enjoy it. Let's raise this thing up. Oh, I can hear it. Okay, this is the inside router thing for the Wi-Fi Ranger. It plugs into 110 volt, I think it's this one. The thing takes about two or three minutes to boot up. You'll hear it go through its little cycle and it'll make its chirp. There it goes. Okay, so it's red on number five, which is the going up to the outside antenna. I don't think it turns green, I'll have to look at the manual. But it does have a Wi-Fi signal. And then we can also see the lights. So it's actually got a signal, it's receiving. So let's get a tablet and see what it does. All right, it's up and connected. Can you guess which ones are Wi-Fi at the house? Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> wonder why so it's uh connected to dogs it's online so it's got the internet all right so we got about 17 and a half a little bit more download and a little over 11 up now let me go ahead and connect our home network directly with the tablet and then do the same speed test to see what the numbers are differently going directly to our router versus going through the Wi-Fi Ranger now I'm connected to dogs instead of to the Wi-Fi Ranger go-to. So let's go ahead and try that speed test again. It's kind of interesting why my ping is so high being directly connected to the router in the house versus going through the Wi-Fi Ranger. So we got a 40 down before we were at 17 and a half, a little bit more, and we were at, what, 11 coming up, so looks like the up is going to be really close to the same, and the, the download speed is uh, about half of what it is directly connecting. Okay, now we can go back up top on the roof and button up everything up there and be done up there. stick a little bit of the same roof coating stuff down in the holes just so if any water gets past with the, whatever we seal this with doesn't get down and into the back of the fridge all right what I decided to do this has got that rubber roof coating on it also so what I'm gonna do is put a bead around the outside of it just put my tin tape over top of it. There, now we got them all covered, sealed, and you can still pop a hole through it and get the screw back out if you ever need to pull this cover back off. And now these globs of silicone, when they dry, they should be adhered to the silicone on this roof. And then I can pull the tape off and then put another bead on in different places. And then that's actually what's going to hold it down is the glob of silicone. Okay, for the most part, we're all buttoned up on the roof. Thank God, because it's like 95 degrees out, 95% humidity, I'm done up there. So now we're back inside. So I'm time to figure out where we're going to put all these wires in the switch. we got to figure out where we're going to mount it. I think I'm going to mount it down here. Let me show you. I got a joint right here in the paneling. But I think if I put the switch right there and screw it down, I think it'll cover up 95% cover up of that joint. I just gotta get those wires to come out the back of the switch instead of the bottom. We're gonna cut along the 
here or drill some holes and get the wires to come out the back and then go into the wall. Next step here is we need to get all these wires coming down from the roof. The communication wire, the cell phone booster wire, the indicator wire, and the power for the lift. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna keep these as flat as possible and push them up all the way up against the wall and tape them in place to get them out of the way so that they don't interfere with anything on the back of the refrigerator. All these need to go into this cabinet here. Um, we gotta drill through the wall. We got a ton of wires back here. I'm a little nervous drill, drilling through this wall and not drilling through a wire. So first things first, let's get these drawers out and take a look and see what we got inside here. All right, now I got the drawers out. And man, there's just a lot of stuff back there. This is like the wiring epicenter here. We got plumbing, we got wires, you can come through up there. But I just have to see on this side here. So it looks like we need to drill somewhere in this area here. to do is to mount this Wi-Fi Ranger inboard or inside router mounted in here somewhere I'm thinking about mounting it right right over here on the wall uh, put an outlet right here but I think I'm gonna control it by a switch so that we can turn it on and off a switch right here the Wi-Fi Ranger is mounted oh what I have here is this is the wire that's going up to the motor on the lift and what I need to do is I need to see how many amps it's drawn so I can know what size fuse to put in. We have company. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're looking at there is the amp meter. I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up and we'll see what's the maximum amps it draws. It looked like it got up to almost three quarters of an amp on the way up. Let's see if it's any different. It should be less on the way down because the weight is actually coming down. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use a three amp fuse for that. The, it got up to almost three quarters of an amp. I could probably do two amp fuse, but I think a three amp would be fine. It's kind of a pain to wire this stuff up back here on this back wall. <laughs> I can only use one hand. I have to go through the drawer openings. Now I don't know which way is up or down on this switch. So before we hook these wires up, we're just gonna hold them in place and try to switch to make sure up is up and down is down. Now I'm not gonna crimp these, I'm just gonna hold them in place and make sure that the up is up and down is down. Oh, I still gotta put a fuse in it. All right, I got the wires pushed in. Let me give it a try. All right, I hear it going up. Excellent. Make sure the down works. I can hear it coming down. There, I heard it seat. So this is the correct polarity. We'll crimp this into place and wrap it up. It doesn't really need any heat shrink because it's inside. I like to do that because I don't like any other little wires to get down on the side of the butt connector and uh, touch the wires there. So I do this as just a safety precaution. Got everything zip tied inside. Take a look. So we got our zip ties, everything's kind of tucked away. I decided to go with a, a two amp fuse instead of a three amp. I'll tell you why I did that. 
I like to have the fuse sized exactly for what the load is if that's the only thing on, on that that wire and that way is two things you'll know exactly if you have a problem with that one circuit because it'd be more likely to pop that fuse very easily and the second thing is you don't need to have a big fuse even though the wire is rated to handle 10 amps I could have easily put a 10 amp fuse in there and then the wire and everything's protected you can just put in just the size fuse that you need of a smaller size and it'll be even protected even even quicker if there was ever a short or something to go wrong okay we managed to get the wires pulled all the way to the front that's going to be the indicator wire and then the cell phone booster wire I had to go through underneath the sink cabinet and then behind a couch it's kind of a pain what I did here is there's the fuse for the lift itself and then right here I taped another fuse to the wall above it all, all these fuses here are blade fuses um, and that's you know a glass uh, quarter inch glass tube fuse so I don't know if I have those in my little tool kit so I just taped this spare one right to the wall if we ever need it well I can tell you it's gonna be good to get this thing back in the hole all the provisions are already made so let's go ahead and do that hook up all the wires I'm only gonna slide it in about halfway and I can hook up all the wires and then also look up and see the fans make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to go outside and see what's hung up on it. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there and hook everything else up on the outside and then we're going to check to make sure everything works. And that's why you don't want to have to take the refrigerator out more than once. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the refrigerator. I unplugged the power cord for the refrigerator. So now when I turn it on, it's not going to sense 110 volts. So it's not going to want to automatically switch over to 110. It's going to try to open up the gas valve, which the propane's not hooked up to it, but it's irrelevant. Again, I'm watching it on the screen for the GoPro. And there to go. Perfect. I can hear the refrigerator also clicking trying to light and we're gonna get an error because it's not gonna light all right here's what it looks like we gotta pull all that stuff back out and wire it up Alright, we have to get this thing wrapped up. We got less than a week before we leave on our first trip for 2018. So what we need to do is I need to finish hooking up the refrigerator. It's in the hole now. So that's always good. We need to finish hooking it up. Something tells me that I don't think Lisa will be really impressed with my skills if the refrigerator's not working on our trip. The next thing that we need to do is install a switch and an outlet right here. Here's the switch that raises and lowers all in one switch. So what I've got to do to mark out where the drawer edge is gonna be, and I think it'll fit, but we're gonna go with one of these switches here. It's a switch outlet combo. Switch on this outlet will control another outlet up inside the cabinet that the Wi-Fi ranger will be plugged into so we can turn it on and off from the face of the cabinet. And then the outlet on the bottom will just be an additional outlet. We'll have to plug something in on the counter, a toaster or whatnot. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of the blue tape. We're gonna tape the area where we're gonna cut out. And we're also gonna mark where the edge of the drawer is. So we're not putting the face plate 
behind the drawer. It's gonna be close. This edge here, I won't be able to fit the jigsaw in, so I'm gonna use an oscillating tool. Okay, the box is in, so let's get it wired up. So it's that GFI breaker, so we're going to have to wire something into that. I got it all buttoned up. Check it out. The new outlet and switch. And then inside here, you see we've got the power outlet plugged into a brand new outlet. Everything's all zip tied and nice and neat going over to the Wi-Fi Ranger. So let's go ahead and raise the Wi-Fi Ranger and give it a try. There it is. Let's turn on the switch. And then that router will come to life. All right, I'll go get a tablet and we'll try it and see how it works. You see we got our switch. I turn the switch on and turns the Wi-Fi Ranger on and then the drawers are all back in everything's all put back together the last thing that we have to do is we have to put the indicator light in the dashboard let's check out the dashboard to see where we're gonna put that indicator light this is kind of the view while I'm driving the steering wheel goes through and blocks the speedometer the tachometer water temperature and also blocks my jacks down light I'm thinking like right there I can put the indicator first I need to get down below and take a look to make sure there's nothing in the way, any wires, <laughs> the important stuff. Look underneath the dash. What a nightmare. I can tell you right now, it's almost virtually impossible for me to even get my hand up in there. There's just no way I'm gonna be able to wire. Might have to find a different location and decide I'm gonna put it right underneath the speedometer, which is that chrome looking uh, round cylinder. Right, I decided I'm gonna put it like right around in this area here. I'll be able to get my hand up there to wire it and put the nut on the back of it. All right, there it is. Now I gotta get the nut and lock washer on it. All right, I got the nut on there and the lock washer. Now I'm trying to get the wire on there. I gotta get the crimpers up in there. I got both wires hooked up to the indicator. I've got my power wire right here. I'm gonna splice it into this red wire here. Uh, that powers the HWH jacks. Essentially the power comes in, goes over to the indicator light, comes out of the indicator light, goes to the wire that we pulled all the way to the roof to the tilt sensor, shorts out at the tilt sensor when it's up, comes all the way back, and then I tied it to a ground wire so that'll turn the light on. Eventually, I'm gonna redo this whole dashboard so I can actually read the gauges. Well, that's what would happen if I turned the key on while I left the Wi-Fi Ranger up. So you can hear the alarm going off. The alarm's not part of that. The alarm is uh, part of the low air pressure, low oil pressure. I think I wired it into the accessory too, so I might be able to, yeah, I did. Okay, perfect. So it comes on with the accessory too. Lower the antenna down and that should turn off. I'm worried about that flex. So we made this. It's gonna sit right underneath here. And that'll keep it from bouncing around. So the Wi-Fi Ranger is now installed, working, excellent. We've got to clean up now. If you have any questions about anything that you saw in today's video, be sure to leave them in the comments below. 
and I'll try to answer them because there's a lot of stuff. It's very technical, this video. Also, I got a, another project. There's projects every day, but the next project is literally this wood cover that I uh, started. This is the front part of the couch, and we need it to tilt up. The cover that's original for the couch does not tilt up. It comes off, but you have to lift the bed up or the couch halfway into a bed and then you can lift the panel out this way here i'm going to put gas struts on this thing so it can lift up on its own I've, I've changed it around a little bit so it's got hinges on it now and we'll see that in a later video all right first time since we installed the wi-fi ranger on this rv and i want to show you exactly what it looks like up there you see it up there on the pole it's almost hitting the power lines but we're actually, it's an optical illusion. We're actually quite a few feet from it. So this is the perfect scenario of why the Wi-Fi Ranger is a perfect complement to your RV. I'm going to show you on my tablet. That's all the networks and not one of them is this campground. So I turn on the Wi-Fi Ranger, which we're connected to now. And then when I log into that, we'll see the signal strength. So tablet directly to the campground Wi-Fi cannot get a signal sitting here at the campsite they have one antenna it's all the way down at the office and we're all the way at the other end of the campground so if we want Wi-Fi we have to walk in and sit over by the office and let me tell you it's hot it's hot it's July 8th I'm not sitting outside I'm only showing you this because I want to take this outside to give it some kind of a chance to get a signal from the campground here's all the networks that it found I'm going to have to sh shield that there from the sun. And there's the D-Link, and you can see it has five bars, full signal strength, that the Wi-Fi Ranger is uh, receiving from it, where my tablet, my tablet by itself can't receive anything outside, but the Wi-Fi Ranger is getting five bars and rebroadcasting that in our RV. So this is like the perfect scenario for the Wi-Fi Ranger, is you got Wi-Fi inside a campground all the way down at one end in the office, and nowhere else except for around the office can you receive it. Lisa, how's the Wi-Fi? Excellent. Yeah, there you go. How's the Wi-Fi, Tara? <laughs> is the Wi-Fi working good? As long as that's air conditioning, that's working really good, isn't it? Yes, it is. What do you think? Is the Wi-Fi working good? I know what that scratching in my chin is. <laughs> 